Hi everyone, welcome back to My Allotment Diaries. My name is Emma, these are My Allotment Diaries and in today's video I'm going to be telling you what seeds I'm going to be sowing in February. So yes, it is February, but it's not time to go too crazy with seeds. There are quite a few things that you can get started now, um, and I would recommend doing this. Now, in the past, I have said, wait, 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 and that is true. You can wait, um, and a lot of people would like to direct sow things as well, as opposed to having them growing in a greenhouse or in pots, um, and then pot them on later. There's lots of advantages to that. Um, but I found last year that I was just so behind with everything, and my allotment plot felt very, very empty at the beginning of the year. So I am going to be starting a lot of my seeds in February this year, just to give myself a head start for the growing season. So I hope this video is helpful. If it is, do subscribe, share it with a friend, and I'll get straight into the seeds that I'm going to be sowing this February. So I had been seed shopping. I went to Wilco's. Wilco's is my favorite place to go for seeds because I think they're quite reasonably priced um, and you get such a big selection. And they always like put new little ones every year that I haven't seen before. So it's quite exciting. Um, one of the things that I'm very excited to get growing this year are peas. I've gone for these ones. These are the pea early onward. And they're to be sown between February and May to be harvested from May to August. Um, and just a little, little bit of explanation on this. So these are guidelines, basically. When it says it can be sown from February through to May, what it basically is telling you is, you have to be a little bit of a detective, you see, is that they can tolerate a little bit of cold because we all know that February and March are still a little bit cold. So these will be absolutely fine if you direct sow them from February, March time. I'm actually gonna sow them in pots at home and the reason is because I have mice in my allotment plot and they love to dig up the seeds um, the little pea seeds. So I'm going to sow them into pots this year. As soon as they start sprouting, mice are not interested in them anymore. So as soon as they start to come up um, above the surface, I will just get them straight out um, and I have my structure all ready to go as well to support them. So peas are a fantastic thing to grow. Very excited to grow my peas. Now is the time to be sowing them if you want to grow them. Another thing that it's time to grow is your tomatoes. I find that February is the perfect month to start your tomato seeds. Um, I've got a little variety here to this year, so obviously you're going to go for the tomatoes. Um, tomato delight? I'll start that again. Obviously going to go for gardener's delight because they are not only one of the easiest tomatoes to grow, um, but they're also absolutely delicious. I could not imagine not having these to harvest. Um, these are just fantastic, so I'm going to get sewing with those. Also gone for these um, tomato sun baby, which are like these little yellow ones. I think they look quite cool. Um, and I have grown like yellow ones before. I don't think they were these ones, but they are such a nice, a nice tomato. It's nice to have something a little bit different in the tomato tent going on. I've also gone for tomato super steak. Um, and these, I think they actually taste a little bit beefy. That's why they're called steak. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I do think there is a tomato that does taste a little bit beefy. Um, I like these because they're nice and big and they're very exciting to grow. Just very, very exciting. Anything that's big is just exciting, right? I've also gone for these ones. I've never seen these ones before and I was super excited when I saw them in the shop. So these are uh, Crimson Crush and just look at the colour. Just look at the colour of that picture. So vibrant, so lovely, so excited to grow these. And um, they also are blight resistant. Very interesting, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. A lot of things say that they're carrot fly resistant or blight resistant. It means that they're basically they've, they've figured out how to cross pollinate a load of things together and make the seeds so that they are resistant to a particular disease. Sometimes in, I, th I find they work. Um, but sometimes not. I have sown carrots before that say they are carrot fly resistant and I have got carrot fly on them. So either it's a different type of carrot fly or it didn't work. But very interesting. So those are my tomatoes that I'm going to be sowing. Also, I have brought myself a rhubarb crown. This is the raspberry red rhubarb crown. This could be planted out now. Um, it's probably not going to be ready for, I think, probably two or three years even um, until I get a really good harvest of rhubarb. But I haven't had this at my allotment plot and I do love rhubarb. It's just something that I didn't buy, didn't put in. Um, it is a bit more of like a permanent plant, um, so I don't want to be moving it about. So I'm going to have to think very carefully about where to position this at the plot. But let me know if you're growing rhubarb because this is something I've not done before um, and I'm very excited to try it. So 
got my rhubarb plant going. I'm going to start my kohlrabi now. Kohlrabi is such an incredible crop, it's very exciting. I've never managed to grow one. Um, I think I've got a couple growing in my polytunnel right now. A lot of you uh, corrected me and said it was a kohlrabi growing, not kale. This is just one of those crops that you can't really find in a supermarket um, and I really want to try it and I really want to eat it. So I'm starting my kohlrabi and again I'm going to be sowing it in trays. This is not being directly sown. Um, in fact nothing that I'm going to show you today is going to be directly sown because because I just don't trust it. Okay, I've completely lied because the next one I am going to direct so and it is obviously radishes. And um, these are the rainbow lights, bright lights. Um, I call them, why did I say rainbow? These are the bright lights. So you can see they come in a vibrancy, vibrant colors. And um, these are the ones that I sowed last time. And you might remember that I got a really, really good harvest, um, kind of early autumn time. And some of them are really big and I got really amazing colors. Um, I think they like the cold. So I do not think these are warm loving crops basically from my experience. I've tried these so many times in the summertime and they've just not worked. So I think early spring or just before spring and early autumn is probably the best time to try radishes. So I'm going to try them now um, in February, probably towards the end of February and I will direct sow these into the ground. Fingers crossed I actually get some nice radishes but how beautiful, how flipping beautiful. And then a couple here that I probably wouldn't normally sow at this time of year, but I looked on the back of the seeds and it says that you can sow it now, and I might just do that. So it's my Cosmos flowers, and I've gone for the more traditional Cosmos this year, not the double-headed. Um, the double-headed didn't work for me last year, it didn't germinate, um, I don't really know why. And also I fancy something new, I think these white ones are so beautiful. Um, and dainty, they're called the Gazebo White Cosmos and they look so beautiful, I love the yellow. If you were a child and you were drawing a flower, I think this is sort of how you would draw it with the big yellow in the middle and then all the big petals around it, so beautiful. And then I've gone for this Sensation Mixed, um, which has got all the, the pinks and the darker pinks and things in there. So I think I might sew these um, into a tray and try them a bit earlier because like I said, I didn't get any last year. so we'll see how that goes but yeah that's the only flower that I'm going to be sowing in February this year as the others could be direct sown and they're going to be more warmer plants like zinnias and sunflowers and dahlias and things like that and the final thing that I'm going to be starting in February is my potatoes um, now traditionally you should be chitting your early potatoes this year I'm actually not going to sow earlies or second earlies I'm just going to do main crop um, because I don't have a massive like massive amount of space at my allotment for potatoes and I've got so much else that I want to put in there this year I'm just going to do main crop and be done with it um, and so what I'm going to be doing is oh these are what are these ones Desiree Desiree main crop they just looked really fun and exciting I was going to go with Maris Piper um, but decided to go with these ones instead last minute last minute decision I'm impulsive like that I'm going to chit them. Now, I have something to say about chitting. <laughs> Stop it. If you purchased one of my lovely planners, and if you did, thank you so much. I was absolutely blown away with the amount of you who actually came and purchased one of these. Just insane, incredible. Thank you so much. If you go to the pre-written February list, and I've written um, some little jobs that I think you could be getting on, on with, just like um, starter jobs, something to you know, inspire you basically. You will see that I have written, chit your early potato seeds in a dark, cool place. Now it should actually be a light, cool place, um, away from frost basically. Now for some reason I've written dark and it's just a mistake. And I, for that I just, I apologize. So please cross it out and write in light um, because it should be a light place. It doesn't mean that your potatoes won't sprout in a dark place because if you've ever had an old potato that you found at the back of a cupboard you might notice that it has sprouted and got some stems coming out of it, some greenery. The problem with it being in a dark place is that that greenery is going to be very very flimsy and not very strong. So if you do it in a light place like on a windowsill that's the best place, they're going to be really strong, really, really ready to go in the ground. So, light place, and I apologise for that. 
Right, let's get sewing. I like to save a lot of the uh, things that plants come in. So I think onions came in these actually, onion sets. And I just reuse them whenever I can. So we're going to fill it with some compost. And I think this one will be really good for peas. So we'll whack in the compost, break up any lumps. I don't use a seed compost. Um, I've never bothered with that really. I don't know why. I just, I just don't like buying too many bags of compost. I like the idea of a multi-purpose one. So I think it can just do everything, you know. But seed compost is designed specifically to help seeds. What it basically does, a seed compost, is it doesn't come with tons and tons of nutrients like a really rich compost. And it just means, oh, it just means that the, uh, the seeds have to work a little bit harder and grow a little bit stronger to try and find new nutrients. So if you grow it in a rich compost, it it doesn't feel the need to get much bigger and sort of survive. So it grows quite slowly because it's got everything it needs. You know, it's like a teenager. They've got everything around them that they need, so why would they bother getting up in the morning and going going to work, you know? It's only when you stop their allowance that they have to get off their own backside and go and do something. So, there you are, see my mother taught me something. <laughs> right, so I filled them all up. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put probably two, two in each one, I think, and I'll try and keep them all. I don't really want to sacrifice any. I'm not a big, big seed sacrificer. You know, I want to save them all. Isn't it funny that peas come literally from peas? So you pick the pea pod and you take the peas out the middle and then it grows into a whole pea plant with loads of other pea, pea pods on it with loads of other peas. It's just mad, isn't it? It literally just has loads of babies. It is, isn't it? That's what it is when you sow seeds. It's like the seed having a baby. That's crazy, isn't it? I suppose it's not much different from us, really, when you think about it. We've got two in each. I think that'll do. I think that's all right. These are quite deep, so I think they'll help the roots. The peas don't really like to be fussed with and moved about, but unfortunately, I mean, it's either that, guys, or the mice get you. So, you know, they're going to have to just suck it up, really. The peas are in. Right, okay. You don't have to bang it like that. That's just what I do. This is quite a good tray. Again, this is from Wilco. It's only a couple of quid. It's lasted me about three years. And um, this is a good tray for tomatoes because I can sort of do them in rows where I've got different tomato breeds. Varieties, I mean, not breeds. <laughs> breeds of tomato. So what we'll do with these, we'll do a row, row each. Oh, I'm so excited for these ones. And they come with little labels on the back. So, anyone saying Emma, make sure you label them. Oh my God, you get it off. Oh, I got it. They come with a label. So I can label them straight away. Right, let's get these ones in. I always find it really fiddly sowing tomatoes and I always think they're going to die but every time I've sown tomatoes from seed they have worked. Don't fear tomatoes. Tomatoes are easy to grow from seed. Easier than you think. I don't want to die. Oh, you didn't get many seeds in here though. Oh god. Not many chances to go wrong. I hate it when they don't give you that many seeds. It's really nerve wracking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine seeds! Who do they think I am? Alan Titchmarsh can't work with nine bloody seeds. Right, okay. Godspeed, little guys. Let's cover them up, keep them warm, keep them still, water them later. Oh, there's another one there. It must have fallen out. Go in there. Right, we'll do the tomato beefy ones. We'll do. We'll rip that. It's only going inside these ones. Put that there. Fantastic, great. That saves a load of writing, that does. That's genius. I bet you get loads in here. You get absolutely loads. No, don't. Oh, what's happened to all the tomatoes then? Is there a tomato seed sword shortage this year or something? What's happened to all the tomato seeds? 
Right, so all that that I've just sown, tomatoes and peas, are gonna, well the peas are gonna stay outside in the greenhouse, tomatoes are gonna go inside because they need warmth. And the only other thing I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna leave the kohlrabi in the cosmos for another day, um, later on in Feb, and we're just gonna chip the potatoes, and I'll just show you how I do that. So, you can't see me down there. What's really good to use is an old egg box. And I've actually got a 12 egg box out there for a dozen eggs, um, which would be much better than this. But just for now, I'll just show you. So the egg box is really great because it holds the um, potatoes up and stops them moving around and stuff. And it's just, it's just good, it's breathable, it's just good. This is what people use on Instagram, so I've just always done it, really. What you do is you get your lovely, lovely potatoes, right? Just put them in the egg box. Like that. Now, if when you buy them, you already see some of the shoots coming up, I guess you'd know what way to put it round. I think there are some eyes. Ah, oh, look. Ah, look. You see here, we've got some green, green shoots. That's the way up it goes. So the shoots that come off it are growing to the surface. So that's the way up it goes. So it'll go like that. <laughs> Basically. So you can sort of look for them as you're doing it, see if they've got any shooting up and if they do, that's just the way around that they go. And then that will just go on a sunny windowsill um, and just out, out the way of the frost or anything and in the sunlight as much as possible and they will sprout and as soon as they've really sprouted in March time I will just plant them outside. And that's how you chip to your potatoes, chip. What a lovely word that is, chit. I love that word. Chit, 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 chit. So that is what I've been up to today. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Sorry it's a little bit short today. I wanted to get something out on a Friday and that's all I'm really was sort of planning on doing on a Friday. So I hope it's been helpful. I'll see you again on Monday, um, hopefully back at my allotment plot. See you then, have a good weekend. Bye.